I'm Marla Maney. I'm a professor of viral immunology from the uh, Division of Infection and Immunity. I'm based in the RAIN Institute. And I also see patients in the clinic in Mortimer Market Centre where I work as a consultant physician. So our primary goal in my lab is to try to harness the inherent immune response of the body to allow it to fight hepatitis B virus. Hepatitis B virus is still a major problem in the world. Um, it's a virus that infects the liver and can cause inflammation in the liver, which then causes damage to the liver and over the years can progress towards cirrhosis and liver cancer. And these diseases still kill more than 700,000 people a year worldwide. Um, and we don't have yet treatments that can cure. In fact, um, liver cancer is the second commonest cause of cancer deaths. So we urgently need new therapies. And um, we think that the immune system has uh, the inherent capacity to control this virus. And we, we're seeing now with immunotherapies that we can also start to fight cancer through the immune system. And so our work is targeted at trying to understand more about which immune responses would be the right ones to boost and how to overcome the exhaustion of the immune response that you see in these situations to allow it to regain control. What we've realised is that um, the liver has a lot of mechanisms which shut down immune responses, a lot of uh, pathways and molecules that are designed to switch off immunity there, um, which is usually protective for the body and stops it overreacting against harmless antigens coming in from the gut. But when you have a virus like hepatitis B, it can then take advantage of that niche. Um, and by studying more about those mechanisms, we found some cells that are able to survive that very hostile environment and maintain their functionality. And we think those would be very important, what they're called resident T cells, would be an important therapeutic target that we could try to boost to uh, allow them to fight both hepatitis B itself and liver cancer. I now co-run one of the modules in uh, immunology and health and disease. So I do do some teaching of students in lectures, um, designing of the course and exam work. But the bit I love best is when we get students rotating through, they often do a three to four month lab project as part of their BSc and MSc. Um, and when the students come to the lab, we get the chance to give them a taste of the real cutting edge of research. Um, and to see them beginning to understand how that process works and get that excitement is, is the best bit of teaching. Well, I'd say go for it and give it a shot because you won't know if, it, if research is going to suit you until you've tried it out. Um, I think the main qualities that you need for a research student is um, a lot of perseverance and that curiosity that will keep driving you forward. Choose your supervisor carefully. You want to look for somebody who's got a good track record of, of supervising students who then go on and are productive, publish well and get their next position because it is a competitive career, but you also want to look for a happy environment, so talk to the other students and make sure that you're going to fit into the team well. Um, and I think look at research as very much like detective work. So I think it's you only realise when you start doing it how creative it can be, that you, you get to come up, you have the autonomy to come up with your own questions. You look for clues first in the literature, formulate your question, then design your own experiments to try and get evidence to support that. And then you go back again and look for more clues and reshape your question. And it's a, it's a very interesting and creative process, which you can only really understand once you start to get an experience of it. Well, I've been at UCL for many years, so obviously um, I'm a convert. Um, it, it's, of course, an academically excellent environment. You've got a lot of cutting edge expertise, so generally if you want to extend your research in different areas, you'll be able to find somebody who will help you with that. It's a very collaborative, friendly environment. And I think what's lovely about it is it's, it's got a long history of being very inclusive and diverse. It might come as a surprise to know that I never intended to become a research scientist. I never saw myself as somebody who would be um, capable of that or even interested in that, actually. So at school, I was more, had a more of a leaning towards English and languages. And I then decided I wanted to do medicine. But even at medical school, it was more the patients and the diseases that interested me. I really wasn't interested in the science and the practicals, I think, were 
um, the experimental outcome was already known didn't interest me. Um, and so it was only when I sort of by chance <laughs> got set up with an attachment in the lab by a, a, um, a chance meet encounter over coffee um, that I thought I'd give it a go. And it was only when I started doing that research and um, understanding the excitement and the thrill of being the first person to see a new piece of data um, and being able to actually then go away and, and read the literature and come up with new um, experimental plans that I, I started getting this bug and, and realised that I wasn't going to be able to go back to being just the doctor and I needed to carry on with research. <laughs>